Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited for this week's video because I let you guys roast me on my Instagram and I'm going to read your roast while doing my makeup. All the products are gonna be linked below, but I'm starting off with some eye gel because my friend's mom is a makeup artist and she told me that if you put eye cream under your eyes before doing your concealer, it looks a lot more smooth. And so I've been doing that and it actually works. My makeup has gone on a lot smoother since I've been doing this and I would recommend you guys to do the same. I also forgot to mention that you guys also sent assumptions that you had about me, not just roast, so it's like double trouble. The first one says, whenever a guy does one thing wrong, you immediately get the ick or something like that. I'm being hauled out to the max right now. I don't know what it is about me, but I do this a lot. This is the sequence I follow. I'll start talking to a guy and I'll get like way too excited. Like I'll be head over heels. Like I'll be like, oh my God, like I'll start like, romanticizing him like i'll go really really deep and then one thing they do and i'm immediately like nope get away from me and then i think to myself like i don't need to lower my standards but then again like that's really hard to find and i can end up alone forever so <laughs> what are we gonna do about that i don't know my concealer is blended in i'm gonna go in with some powder people say a lot of boys like you but none of them actually approach you this is so so true. Where are they? I don't see anyone because no one ever approaches me. People will be like, you got hose. My Snapchat is so dry. Like if someone approached me, I would give them the time of day. I would show them effort. I would spend time with them and get to know them. But if no one approaches me, then how the hell am I supposed to find a boyfriend? So this is where we get stuck and we're in this like repetitive cycle that never ends. I'm gonna put on some blush. This is from Rare Beauty and it's my latest obsession. This is in the color Nearly Rose. Such a beautiful blush. Look at how beautiful she is. You like your nose now, but you still think it could be better. What's better? Is there a better nose? Like what, what does that even mean? How can you have a better nose? A nose that functions better than mine? I think my nose works perfectly well. I can breathe normally. So no, I don't think it could get better. Like what's better? The perfect Q button nose? So, no, that's not better. That's just what society claims is better, but you don't have to conform to that idea. And I personally stopped. There is no right or wrong physical feature. Like unless it literally doesn't work, there's nothing wrong with it. It's all in your mind and you don't have to conform to these beauty standards that society sets out because they're so toxic and so negative. Yes, it's not perfectly straight. It's not like cute and slanted and small and but like, no. But does it work? Perfectly fine. That's all that matters. I think I'm gonna do some winged eyeliner because that's what I've been doing recently. But I like it when the wing is very thin and just very delicate looking. You work hard even when you don't want to. This is very true. And this actually has a lot to do with the way I was brought up and raised. Hold on, I'm gonna need to get quiet for this. <laughs> Yeah, that looks horrible. I grew up always with my dad telling me that like, oh, I need to work, I need to do this. Like I need to be doing something productive with my time. I need to be doing things for my future. And like, I'm very grateful for that. But now I'm 17, about to turn 18. And I have the same mindset where like, if I'm not doing something productive, I feel extremely guilty and I cannot enjoy what I'm doing. Say I'm having like, a self-care day and so I'm not doing any homework I'm not doing anything work related and maybe I'm just gonna hang out with my friends or I'm just gonna stay home and watch a movie I physically won't be able to pay attention to that movie because I'll just be thinking in my head like did I do anything productive today like what did I do today and if the answer is nothing I will force myself to do something so I feel better and it's honestly like a very toxic like it may seem good but it comes to points where like I physically can't do things without feeling guilty. It's like very tiresome and it can be very toxic because sometimes you need those self-care days where you do absolutely nothing. I think that's like by definition just like a workaholic and I don't want to be a workaholic but I guess I am a little bit so it's not really great. Okay, we're gonna try to do this again. Why does it look like that? Maybe we should try this side first. Now let's try to do that to this side. <laughs> you are so confident you don't settle for anyone and that's why you don't have a boyfriend. 
That is very true. I don't settle because I think settling is selling yourself short. I think if you're settling down, you're selling yourself short. Because if you literally feel like you're settling down with someone and you don't really even wanna be with them or like you know that you could do better, babe, get yourself out of that situation because if you know you deserve better, you probably do. That's why I would never ever suggest someone to settle down for anything that they don't wanna do or anyone because I think settling is like giving up and we are not quitters. We were not raised quitters and we don't quit. Bad bitch energy. You're a pick me girl. This whole concept of pick me girls, what even is a pick me girl? Why do we create these terms and we try to bash girls for behaving and acting in certain ways? What the hell, like what's the point of that? I don't understand it. If someone wants to be a pick me girl, which I don't even know what that fully means, like someone who does stuff that other people want or like people that are like, I'm I'm so small or like tee hee. I don't know why we're still dwelling on these insignificant matters. If a girl wants to say she's small, if someone wants to do that, let them. I don't know why people feel the need to like insert themselves into everyone's situation, but if someone wants to act a certain way, just let them. What's it to you? How does her saying, I'm small, or oh my god, look, my hands are so small next to us. How does, how does that affect you? Like, it really just shouldn't. And if it does, then like you need to work on yourself and not criticize some other girl. I just think it's very unnecessary. Like we do not need to be bashing girls for the way that they behave. We should be supporting each other. If a girl wants to do that, just let her. Let's do some eyebrows. I'm just gonna put some gel on them so they don't go anywhere. I'm gonna curl my lashes and let's find another roast. You say you haven't been in a relationship, but girl, you have kissed six boys, dude. Oh, there's a dude at the end as well. I don't think you need to be in a relationship to kiss someone. I've been in like situationships if those count. Those were usually for very short periods of time, but I don't think you need to be in a relationship to kiss someone or even do anything with someone. It's all up to you. Whatever you want to do, just do it. <laughs> You're very nervous about NYU. I'm not not nervous. Obviously, I'm nervous, but I think I am prepared. And even if I'm not prepared, I know that I can count on myself to figure it out because I always do at the end. Wow. This is a great eyelash curler and mascara. I am nervous, but my excitedness trumps over you, Trump. It wins over my nervousness. When life throws you lemons, you have to make lemonade. And I know for a fact I will be able to squeeze those lemons and make lemonade. I'm gonna put on some highlighter. This is Makeup by Mario's highlighter and look at that. You see how it's like clear? That's how glossy it is. It's insane how good this is. Actually the lighting, I don't know if it's gonna do me any justice. A lot of people sent me comments saying like, I feel like you're bi. I've personally never felt those kind of emotions for a girl ever in my life. I can most definitely appreciate someone's beauty or attractiveness but I wouldn't really consider that being like bisexual you know what I mean but I don't know like I just don't really like labels I think sexuality is a spectrum and anyone can fall anywhere and I also don't think it's necessary for someone to straight out like label themselves as anything you're too nice and have a hard time saying how you really feel I feel like that's very much the opposite of who I am because I'm a very communicative person if something's on my mind I will say that I will voice my opinion because I think that's the key to having like any kind of healthy relationship with anyone. And so like with my parents, if something's on my mind, I will say it. With my friends, if something's on my mind, I will say it. So I think this is quite false. I don't have a hard time saying how I really feel because if I don't speak up about something, then how is that problem ever going to get fixed? You know what I mean? Communication is key for everything. What's the next makeup step? I feel like I haven't done makeup in a while. Let's put on some highlighter, some powder highlighter. You had an easy childhood. I will say I'm very grateful for the childhood I've had. I understand that I've had a lot of privileges growing up and I'm very grateful for every single one of them. 
However, I don't think I had an easy childhood because I moved every two years. So I basically had to pack up my entire life every two years and move to a completely foreign country. And that resulted in a lot of things that affect my life today, like on a daily basis. I think that's where my commitment issues stem from because I've never really had like a commitment to a single place because I've always been just moving on the go. And that's why I'm very open to change. So I wouldn't say I had like an easy childhood because there are a lot of things in my childhood that affect me in a negative way right now. I am grateful and thankful for what I've had but I wouldn't call that like an easy, you know, childhood because there was absolutely no stability, like none. I'm going to share my secret. I get questions on my lips and what color I'm wearing every single day and it's from Buxom. It's the Plump Line Lip Liner in Hush Hush. Oh my God, this is like what you need because it's amazing. This lipstick from Rare Beauty, it's literally the same exact color as the lip liner and it's so amazing. And this shade is in praise, so good. Wow, I am like very, very impressed with Rare Beauty. I did not, honestly, like I don't have the highest expectations for it, but every product I have used, I've actually fallen in love with. We're setting our makeup with some setting spray. Mm. Although our makeup is done, I kind of want to continue reading these roasts because I like them. You don't do anything that doesn't fit your logic. Logic is everything to you. That's something about myself that I don't really like talk about, but I'm a very logical person more than like an emotional person. And I know how to separate my emotions from situations. So if something doesn't like fit logically, but it fits emotionally, like I will literally have trouble understanding that because I'm a little bit more logical. I don't know why, like logical things just make more sense to me. And I think that's why I'm better at math and science than I am at humanities and English because math and science, it's logic. Well, it's not really logic, but it's like formula. Like there's only one right answer. You know what I mean? Figure out the formula, figure out how they connect to each other and you've got your answer. It's very simple to figure out. But with humanities, like English and history, it's like, there's no formula, there's no right or wrong. It's very open-ended. And that's like very overwhelming to me because I don't like it. I like it when it's like simple and straight. Done, no emotions, nothing. Just follow the formula and you're there. You know what I mean? Even though like formulas don't really exist in real life, it's just like an analogy I use. But yeah, I would definitely say I'm more logical than emotional. And most of my decisions are based on logic and not emotions. I don't know if that's a good thing. We will figure out how that impacts my life in the future. <laughs> are you one of those who give advice but don't have a boyfriend? Yes. And you want to know why my advice is really good? Is It's because, like I said, I'm a very logical person and I know how to separate my emotions from situations. And usually when my friends come to me with like relationship advice, I can very easily give them advice because first of all, I'm not blinded by love and I can just follow logic. They usually have trouble because they are in love and it's their significant other. And so they have a hard time separating their emotions for that person. So I guess I would say I'm a good advice giver. I'm a great therapist. You would prefer watching movies alone in your room than going out and being bored. I think quarantine has definitely made me more of an introvert. I love, love when it's just alone time. I love it when it's just me time. I can put on a movie, get my snacks, get like comfortable, and it's just me, myself, and I that night. Oh, that's what I would call a perfect day. I can make myself have fun. I can entertain myself. I can make myself laugh. Oh, and I actually saw a TikTok about this. This is kind of getting off topic, but someone was like, the reason why I'm single is because I love being alone so much that the person needs to bring me more joy than being alone does. The person that I'm hanging out with, I would have to pick them over being alone. And because I love being alone so much, it's very difficult to find someone who brings brings me more happiness than being alone does. And I was like, oh my God, this is exactly me. 
That's why I can't lower my standards because it's like, I would just rather be alone. A lot of people said you're a virgin. I am one. I just never have met someone that I'm comfortable enough to go to that level with. Honestly, all that, that I'm looking for, for my first time, like I don't really have like expectations for it, but all that I want is that I'm 100% comfortable with that person. You are loving the person you are becoming. I really like this. I do, I do. I think like, Something just happened over 2020 where I finally just like came to terms with who I am and I just think I'm headed towards a right direction. I have a healthy relationship with myself. I have a healthy relationship with the people around me. I just think that we're moving forward in a great way and I just think it's I think it's all coming together. It's a journey. We're starting it. I definitely know that there are going to be struggles, but I'm ready to take them on and I think we will be able to deal with them. On that lovely and positive note, I think I'm going to end this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is my makeup routine. If you want to check out all the products, it will be linked below. I love you guys so, so much and thank you so much for sending in your roast. Thanks for roasting me, by the way. Really appreciate that. Thanks for that, bud. Um, I love you guys so much and I will see you next week. Bye guys.